Hello again, I'm playing with Chunk. This time I have a broken processor. That's the reason why it is strong. Chunk. It's an E5 2695 version 3 or V3. Um, that's one of the higher end uh, processors of this uh, series. The highest number is 2699 and had 18 cores. The 2695 here has 14 cores, runs from 2.3 to 3.3 gigahertz. Uh, came out originally in 2014 and was $2,400 at that time. Uh, now it's completely worthless and I also opened it up to show you the marvels inside. I opened this by lifting the cover around the edge here with a knife. So squeezing a knife between that all around. Here you can see the glue, the sealant here. And then it cracked and yeah, the chip split between the layers. Um, normally, if you open a processor like that, you heat this heat spreader here, which is in fact a relatively massive plate of copper that spreads the heat from the chip to a larger area, which is in this, uh, in this case here not so much larger because the chip is huge. So you can compare that with my finger. It's about well, maybe an inch in this direction and an inch and a half in that direction. Or in metric units, let me see. Yeah, it's three and well, 3.3 .3 centimeters long. And about, can I see that? Yes, about two and a half wide, so one inch wide and a little bit more long. Um, where was I? Yes, normally you heat that up because the chip here is soldered to this heat spreader. You can see the solder here on the edge. This is a very low temperature solder and it's also extremely soft. You can see I can pierce that easily. <coughs> it contains a lot of uh, indium, so that makes a really low temperature solder. And the other side here is soldered to the PCB that has all the contacts on this side so there must be a whole network of uh, connections from one side to the other to the pcb which uh, to the chip which looks on the uh, on the underside maybe about like this a lot of dots that or solder it to the PCB. Okay, let's have a closer look to that. And in this case, it was really good that the chip split between the layers because otherwise we couldn't see anything. There's a large solder area on the top and there are these contacts on the bottom and there is nothing to see, but here, we can clearly see all the different uh, structures here and we could probably try to count if this is really a 14 uh, core CPU. 
All right, I switch to the microscope now and here we can see that's one core. It's identifiable by this part here that is probably the cache or maybe it's the, uh, the central processing core of that core. So a core is in fact a complete processor with all the parts you need. There is number one, there is a second one, number three, four, five, six, and then comes some other stuff, interconnect, whatever, seven, eight, nine, and, oh, I missed one, ten, and then 11, 12, 13, 14. And then all the other stuff here. I mean, this chip has, for example, 40 PCI Express lanes. It uh, has the memory controller, memory management for up to 700. 68 gigabyte of RAM, so that's all on this chip here. And if I turn it around, we get all the nice colors here from red over green to blue. The whole spectrum here, oh, that's that looks cool here. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer. Okay, so um, where we are, full magnification. And we have all these wonderful colors here, so let's enjoy that. I have no idea what all this stuff does, but let's have a look on these billions of transistors here. Okay, so that's one of the cores. Can we get it a little bit sharper, more focus? Well, it's difficult. It, it's a fraction of a millimeter up and down with the microscope. And it looks completely different. And a little bit turn on. Okay, so that's nice. So. I'm sorry, I don't have a better microscope than this. So that's the best we can get here. Let's see if we can see more on the other half of the chip. Yeah, that looks not bad. Let's try to get the maximum. It's difficult. I can set it sharp in the center, then it blurs on the edge or vice versa. Mm -hmm. 